Through the years, the Premier League has been blessed to witness great African midfielders. Yaya yeah, Toure, Mikel Essien, and one player worth mentioning is John Mikel Obi. His control, composure, his military dominance, and the amount of dirty work he did for both club and country were what really made him stand out as a player. During his years at Chelsea, he achieved a lot. Two Premier League titles, one Champions League, the Europa League, four FA Cups, and the list goes on and on. The roles and the impact he played for both club and country were far beyond what we think. So in this video, we'll take a look at the dramatic and successful life of one of the most underrated African midfielders, John Mikel Obi. But before we get into the video, please, please, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and let's get straight into the video. Mikel's first taste of European football started with Norway first division side in Oslo at the age of 16. In 2005, he got called up to represent the Nigerian national team in the under 20 FIFA World Cup. Little did he know this was the tournament that would set off his football career. Mikel and the Nigerian team stormed the tournament, beating Ukraine, the Netherlands, Morocco, and they would eventually make it to the finals. In this campaign, three players were super vital for Nigeria Chinedu Obase, Tai Taibo, and Mikelobi. The tall, commanding midfielder was dominating the games effortlessly. Unfortunately for Nigeria, they lost to the finals to Messi's Argentina. Messi went on to win the Golden Ball Award and Mikel followed in second winning the Silver Ball for a spectacular display for Nigeria. Immediately after the competition, every big club in Europe were looking to secure a signature. Now, this was where the transfer saga began. Before the Under-20 World Cup, Manchester United agreed a deal to sign Mikel, but the plan was for him to join the club by the end of the season, which was going to be on the 1st of January 2006. Everything seemed safe for him to join Manchester United. He held a press conference on Villain where we actually saw him wear the club jersey. Then a couple weeks later in May, Mikel came out with an interview claiming he was forced to agree to him in Manchester United, saying, I was put under a lot of pressure to do that. I was denied advice from my agents and people I trust, and I didn't get much time to think about that. He then proceeded to say he was truly interested in joining Jose Mourinho's Chelsea. A year later in June 2006, all three clubs eventually came to an agreement where Chelsea paid 16 million for the 19 year old midfielder, becoming the most expensive Nigerian player at that time. Mikel's early years in Chelsea were a bit off to the public eye because when he joined, Jose Mourinho immediately deployed him as a defensive minded midfielder, which was something we never saw in players. Like a couple months ago, he carried the Nigeria under 20 team to the finals as an established attacking minded midfielder. So everyone saw it like he was being played out of position and he was not achieving his full potential in the DM role. But after a couple games, Mikel quickly adapted into the role as Mourinho trusted him game after game and game. With his height, strength, good ball control and his range of passing, this were amongst the list of things Mourinho truly maximized in Mikel. During the 2008-9 season, Mikel eventually became a starter at the expense of Injo Makelele and eventually secured a 5-year contract after impressing Chelsea's new manager Philippe Scolari. Scolari was full of praises on Mikel, saying he looks like he belongs in the position, he knows more about his position and he's a more experienced player. Mikel indeed did feel his trust and he kept his place in the starting lineup. And in the Champions League, Chelsea were reaching incredible heights and no one ever saw them. But unfortunately, they got knocked out in controversial fashion against Barcelona in the semi finals. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we all remember this time. In 2010, Mikel started to win more silver awards at Chelsea, winning the FA Cup and the Premier League after beating Manchester United by a single point. But unfortunately for him, towards the end of the season, he got injured and missed the 2010 World Cup in Nigeria. In 2011, Andre Villabao took over at Chelsea and for some very weird reason he snubbed Mikel, failed to give him game time and he failed to communicate properly with the player. This period was very hard on the player and of course the media started to doubt his true potential. That period quickly learned by that Andre Villabao got sacked and Di Matteo came in and now Mikel was slowly getting involved in the team, coming in as a substitute in the league and featuring heavily in the cup games. With the help of Mikel, Chelsea won the FA Cup, beating Leicester, Tottenham, of course, after a very beautiful display against a top Liverpool side in the finals. He also had incredible runs in the Champions League, notably against Barcelona and the 2012 Champions League finals against Bayern Munich. This might hands down be his best ever performance in the Chelsea shirt. Now let's look into it. So going into the finals, Mikel wasn't even intended to start because he barely played during the season and he wasn't one of Chelsea's strongest players at that time. But with Ramirez, Ivanovic and John Terry all suspended, Mikel had to step up big time as a defensive cover and also in the attack. Minutes by minutes, tackle by tackle, Mikel kept dominating the Bayern midfield of Toni Kroos, Schweinsteiger and Thomas Muller. Moving through the channels, absorbing the press while also acting as a playmaker, sending in long balls from deep over the defence to draw back. Now let's take a look at the numbers. Mikel had 88% pass completion. 100% attempted tackles, which was the most on the field, and last but not the least, a 92% pass completion in the attacking third. 
Overall, he was the third best player on that field that night, behind Peter Cech and Didier Drogba, who won them their first ever Champions League title. Following the Champions League performance, Mikel returned back into the starting level in the 2012-13 season and he eventually earned himself a five-year contract, keeping him in the club up until 2017. Mourinho came back as manager and Mikel was now being used more as an impact sub just to close out the games for Chelsea. Now, this was where he got the famous name, the Human Final Whistle. Because as soon as Mikel came on around the 70th, 80th minute, the game was practically over. A year later under Mourinho, Mikel won his second Premier League title, making him the first Nigerian with two Premier League titles. Unfortunately, Mourinho got sacked after a bad run of games and after the Conte got higher during the summer. Conte, who I personally believe, forced Mikel out of Chelsea. Now, let me explain why. So in 2016, Nigeria Under-23 were set to take part in the Summer Olympics in Rio and Mikel Obi was included in the team as part of three overage players allowed to participate in the tournament. But joining the team came at a risk. Conte gave Mikel two options. One, he doesn't partake in the tournament and he keeps his place at Chelsea. And two, he represents Nigeria in the Olympics and he never plays for Chelsea. Mikel took the only sensible option and he went to play for the Nigerian Under-23 national team. I can tell you he picked wisely because with his leadership, he helped Nigeria finish in third, claiming their bronze medal at the Olympics. Now, when he came back to Chelsea, Conte never spoke to him again, he didn't put him in the team, even once. So, after 11 silverwares, 12 managers and 249 appearances for Chelsea, this was the unfortunate end of Mikel's 11 years at the club. After Chelsea, he went on to play for clubs in England, notably Stoke City, Middlesbrough and also played for clubs outside the country. The Nigerian national team was a very huge part of Mikel's football career from day one. As mentioned earlier in the video, the Under-17 World Cup in 2003 and the Under-20 World Cup in 2005 set the stage for his career. Unlike at Chelsea, when Mikel played for Nigeria, he assumed a more dominant role in the midfield, driving his team forward and displaying his vision. Back in 2010, Mikel played a very huge role for Nigeria in the AFCON, starting all games and eventually beating Algeria for third place. Then in 2013, he had become a very important and well-respected figure on the team. Now going to the 2013 AFCON, Nigeria had a very good team in Mikel, Iyama, Emeniki and coached by the great Stephen Keshi. The Super Eagles stormed the tournament, they breezed through the group stage, beating one of the greatest African nations, the Ivory Coast 2-1, then eventually making it to the finals, beating Burkina Faso 1-0. Now, they won Nigeria's first AFCON since 1994. Mikel got featured in the team of the tournament alongside with four other Nigerian players. But after the 2010 AFCON, he slowly realized his time on the pitch was limited, but he still wanted more. Now, he was playing what we call the senior man role. He went on to feature for Nigeria in the 2014 World Cup, where they eventually got knocked out by France in the round of 16. Then, he went to play for the Nigeria under 23, where they won bronze in 2016. He also featured in the 2018 World Cup in Russia and eventually ended his international career on a high, finishing third with Nigeria in the 2018 AFCON in Egypt. Overall, Mikel was a great idol to many players. As a player, you could listen to his manager, adapt to any situation he found himself, and also he saved his country very, very well. Now he's back home in Nigeria, giving the young talents a stage to find the next Mikel. I've come to the end of Mikel's football journey. I hope I did a good job on this. As usual, guys, if subscribe if you are new to the channel, don't forget 15 likes on this. And last but not the least, happy Independence Day, Nigeria.